Uh, all right, we are live now, guys. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. I am super excited. I got Chris M. Walker. The man, the myth, the legend, if you will. Um, everybody knows you as legend, legend, legend. That's why we know you as, right? So um, why don't we do this? Why don't you, Chris, go ahead, just give a brief, uh, brief introduction about who you are, what you do, and then I'd like to go back and say, okay, what were you doing before you got into all marketing and all that? Okay. Uh, we can talk about a journey and dive into so, it. We'll start where I am that. now, and then we'll do the origin story. Yep, exactly. Right. So who are you? Any just introduction, thank you. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me. I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, Saravanan uh, Ganesh. Saravanan, all right. Thank you for having yep. me, yeah, Saravanan. Half the um, people so. call me Ganesh, half the people call me Saravanan, so anything is fine. All right, cool. Uh, well, anyway, thanks for having me. I uh, my name is Chris M. Walker. I have the M because there was a one hit wonder musician in the 1990s named Chris Walker. So if you Google Chris Walker, it shows up all of his stuff. So I had to come up with another way to go about it. Anyhow, um, my main role these days is the CEO and founder of uh, Legit.com, which is a platform that helps businesses grow via software that helps them find services that they need to get things done. And uh, before that, I also run Superstar SEO, which is my SEO business. It's, uh, it's uh, agency services, software, training, stuff like that. We have a blog and all that stuff. Uh, we've been doing that for about 10 years as well. So that's awesome. Awesome. Network. Love it. Thank you. Yeah. I know you as legit, the guy from legit, the guy who owns legit because, uh, hey, we've all bought something or the other in legit at some point in time, especially right. if you're in the SEO field, right? Yeah. So yeah, let's... Let's take a few years back, Chris, before getting into SEO, marketing, everything. What was your background? And then how did you stumble into marketing? I'd like to know that. Yeah. So the origin story, as it were, is I was uh, working as a level one uh, tech support, uh, IT tech support for um, like a real estate development company, I guess is what you would call them. And it sucked, uh, as you can imagine. <laughs> and um, I needed, I had some credit card debt that I needed to get out of. And so I started like stumbling around trying different things uh, to just make a little money here and there. Um, one thing I did was I was like, I did Amazon to eBay arbitrage. So I would use my Amazon Prime account to like resell stuff on eBay, which is against Amazon Prime terms of service. Don't, don't try that. Uh, right. And then, uh, you know, one thing after the other. And then I stumbled on a blog post from, a professional wrestling blog that I used to read that had gone away, but there was like a one page of uh, what the, the guy was doing now. And he was talking about how he was making his money, his living doing something called affiliate marketing, which I'd never heard of, but I found appealing. So I started researching that. And this was around just for the timeline is around 2013 or so. Got it, yep. uh, and I, I started researching that. I read on warrior forum and different things like that. And it sounded really appealing to me. And I bought a course, which was really expensive to me at the time. It was like 47 bucks. Uh, and it was uh, called Bring the Fresh from a guy named Kelly yes. Felix. Yeah. A lot of, got a lot so of, many similarities. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. A lot of big names in our industry came through that that plan. Uh, and that got me started with my first site, which started doing pretty well, oh, even though I didn't even realize what I was doing at that time was called SEO. I thought I was just doing affiliate marketing, but I, I threw up a site and started making some money, uh, you, mostly using a tool called Magic Submitter uh, to rank the site which was just like a mass link building tool. I don't know if, know if it still exists or not, but mm. I, uh, the reason I bring that up is because I didn't know what I was doing with spam and it was working, but then like the penguin 2.0, right. I think it was came in 2013 and that like annihilated that overnight. I was like, well, shit, I'm not, it's all right. If I swear, I hope. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, uh, and, you know, so now I got to figure this out again. So I tried different things again, tried different things. And then I bought an even more expensive course called uh, Source Phoenix, which was an Alex Becker course. And that was like $1,000, which was just, I had to use PayPal credit to pay for it at the time, yeah. which ended up being a good thing because that forced me to like, I've got to make this work because I spent this much money on it. I got to like do the work and like make it work. So mm -hmm. I did some affiliate from that. And that's when I started doing clients as well, client SEO. Mm -hmm. And I had never considered even doing that before, but I started doing client SEO while I still had my day job. So I would have to like take phone calls in right. the bathroom so I didn't get in trouble while I was at work. Right. And uh, that, that did pretty well. It didn't get me enough to get me out of the day job though, which was really the goal. And then on a whim, uh, Alex Becker started a marketplace back then. Uh, I'm not going to say the name of it because it no longer exists, but mm -hmm. uh, and on a whim, I threw up a $10 service that I arbitraged from another site. And that was my free, first freelancing service. And that mm -hmm. sold. And then that sold some more and sold some more. And then uh, I listed another service from a software I had. And that took off. And then I had an influencer shout me out 
for that service. And then I got tons of orders from that. So that's when things really started to change for me. That was when I started freelancing and doing freelance SEO, which was kind of like the change point for me. I started making a lot of money and that was eventually what got me out of the job. Uh, and then shortly after I got out of that job at the site that I was using to make all that money started having all kinds of problems. It would crash, it would get hacked, it would be down for days. And so I started selling stuff through my own site uh, and we're up to about 2017 now okay. uh, through my own site, through Superstar SEO. And I had made uh, friendships with several of the freelancers on that other site I was using. And they're like, well, can we sell through your site too? Mm. And I was like, that's when the light bulb went off. I was like, maybe there's an opportunity here. Right. Uh, and I'd happen to meet a customer I had from that other site was a developer. Uh, so we partnered and we built Le uh, Legit. Now, Legit was originally just going to be like another product for my SEO business. I didn't expect it to be like a big Market thing. Place. Right. So, but within a month of launching it, it was by far my biggest revenue source. Mm. And uh, that was in 2018 when we launched. And, you know, it's wow. been what, almost seven years now. And uh, it's really taken off since then in okay. grown to heights beyond what I control, imagined and, and turned into something that's not even like the same business at this point. Like, cause we wow. have like the software and the AI and stuff built in that nobody else has. Wow. And, uh, that's kind of awesome. It. That is awesome. That is uh it's funny, I got my start in SEO in 2014, um, OMG machines, Mike Long. Yeah. Um, the same thing had to put, actually. yeah, we had to put the, put my credit card on payment plans. And, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm interviewing a couple of other people for this uh, fundraising event thing. Um, and they were around the same time, 2013, 14, a lot of people got into SEO. Mm -hmm. I was on a phone call with Mike Long yesterday, um, literally. Uh, he's doing a little bit to contribute to uh, and he was talking about the days when he started SEO, um, I mean, um, OMG and all that and uh, stuff like that. So awesome. I love that. So that's funny. I, t I spoke to Mike Long yesterday as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was talking about a couple of new things he's doing. I didn't get exciting. to talk to him long, but yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So great. So awesome. So you were uh, a freelancer mm -hmm. getting Still all these services. What were you freelancing? Was it a whole SEO package? Was it links? What were you doing? So the first service I did was social signals. Uh, and that was just because I found it on another site. I was like, I don't even know how to, I didn't even know how to do anything at that point. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I just resold that and that took off. And then I started doing another type of link and then other types of links and then some Google maps stuff. And it's mostly links, but also some S like some uh, Google maps, some embeds. Now I do consulting as well and right. a few other things like that. But, you know, I still do 60, 70 grand a month just in freelancing, like as a freelancer on my own. Oh, blog. really? Wow. I should probably, I was just uh, talking to you before the call and say, maybe I never, I've never been a vendor or, or freelancer and try to sell stuff. Maybe I should look into that. Um, it's something a lot of agencies ignore and they shouldn't uh, because I mean, first of all, 60, 70 grand a month is more than most agencies make. Oh my God. Yes. absolutely. Uh, I know now that that's not typical. I don't want to give the impression that a lot of people are going to make that, but even if it's another 10 or 12, like why wouldn't you bolt that onto your agency and yes. use it as a way of lead gen as well? You know? Yes. I have a PBN service that I that I was I was just selling it through my Facebook group and then I stopped it because it can become a lot of work. Um, but yeah, something to keep in mind. So you have your superstar SEO, SEO superstar agency. Superstar SEO. Superstar SEO agency. Mm -hmm. And then you got Legit, right? Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about your agency and then I'd love to talk more about Legit because I think a lot of people would love to know more about Legit. Sure. Uh, agency side... Is it just client SEO? What all what also no, is it that you do? No, like at this point, I don't really even take new clients except for very like rare occasions. Okay. Uh, because, you know, I don't know if you've ever done agency, but it kind of sucks. <laughs> like I don't really, I never really liked it, but we still have a few, but we have services. Like I say, a lot of it is as freelancers, like that's under the superstar SEO brand. Okay. I have a couple of softwares that we uh, sell through that. Um, I, I don't have a course right now, but I used to have some training. Uh, we have a blog and I still do a lot of SEO like content as well. And I have one of the bigger SEO Facebook groups in superstar SEO. Group yes. So. Yes. Awesome. Love it. So you don't actively go do get clients or uh, anything like that. Okay. Not anymore. No. So most of your time and resources and revenue, all that is from legit mostly. Yeah. I mean, it's growing to a massive like organization and operation. So that takes up most of my time. Okay. All right. So let's start talking about legit then. So you, let's start at the beginning. You decided you partner with somebody and build out this marketplace. Yeah. So in the beginning, like I, it's funny, a lot of people ask me, do, do I do the coding 
for it. I was like, no, if I did, it would still say hello world. That's like <laughs> all I know how to do. Uh, no, I partnered. Hey there, if you're enjoying this content, I'd love to take just 60 seconds of your time and share something very close to my heart. You see, I was born in the beautiful country of Sri Lanka. I was fortunate to escape the civil war that plagued that country for many years. While the country has enjoyed peace for 15 years now, the effects of that conflict are still deeply felt, especially by children who lost their parents, siblings, entire families. But I'm not just here to ask for a donation. I'm here offering something valuable in return, an incredible opportunity that could positively impact your own life. I partnered with over a dozen top tier industry experts in SEO, online marketing, direct mail, YouTube ads, copywriting, entrepreneurs, and more. These aren't just any experts. They are seven and eight figure business owners. They've built multi-million dollar businesses, but more importantly, each of them have also helped countless people achieve success. By supporting this cause, you'll not only be making a difference to these children, but you'll also gain access to exclusive knowledge, secret trainings from these industry leaders. As a matter of fact, I was able to even twist their arm to give away exactly what's working right now on YouTube ads in search engine optimization, and even in depth in things like, you know, how to get clients, schema market, cold email, a lot more. Some of them even agreed to give one-on-one -on -one mentorship and group coaching opportunities to those who donate, all available to those who support this charity. Click the link to join the waiting list where you'll get access to all this training and more. On October 29th, you will receive an email with a link to donate and unlock this exclusive content. Thank you again. With the developers, still my partner. Um, and like I said, it was going to be just a marketplace for SEO services, but it's gone beyond just SEO and it's gone beyond just a marketplace at this point. But hmm. um, it was, yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, basically there was another site that I used to use that went away and I wanted to basically replace that. And I did, but like we've since eclipsed it. Hmm. Um, it a lot of it is SEO uh, because that's where I had a following. So that's like who went there. Uh, but, you know, we also have, you know, graphics and content and video and AI services. And we also have software built in that can help you with your business and things like that. Too. So just for those who don't know how legit works, can you give me an idea overview? So I'm a, a freelancer, right? Mm -hmm. I can come and sell my stuff through legit. Yes. Although we don't, a lot of the like, freelance sites that people are probably going to compare us to, even though we're doing our best to like not have those comparisons are fine for everyone. We, we tend to be a bit, make it a bit harder for new freelancers because that's not who we want. We want people that can help businesses specifically. So I don't want, there's an example I used for Fiverr. There's a mm -hmm. guy that on that site that looks like Jesus who like okay. will hold up a sign or do whatever you want, basically in a video. That's not who I want. That's not the customer I want. I want, I want to help businesses. Our mission is to have every business on earth using our platform. So if you're a freelancer, you need to, you're going to, you can list, anybody can try to list their service. There's a 66 point inspection that they have to go through. And then wow. they're going to have to earn the right to be shown in the marketplace because I don't just want a thousand or a thousand people offering citations or whatever. So, so what do you call them? Do you call them freelancers, vendors? Freelancers. Okay. How many freelancers are right now in, in legit? Depends on how you look at it. Uh, okay. There's a we're implementing a thing where a lot of them aren't visible until they like get some sales and make some effort. But there's probably tens of thousands. I really don't have like a, a solid number. Okay. But but over time, you you have come up with this. I, I'm I'm sure not you did not come up with the 66 point qualification process one day. Over time, no. you came. In right? the beginning, everybody could apply. Like we didn't even have we didn't even like approve services in the beginning. But that turned out to be quite problematic. Uh, um, Right. But yeah, like over time, we've learned what things to look for. So like, for example, you can't just have any random profile picture. You have to have either a picture of yourself or a branded logo because we want it to, to you know, appear professional. Uh, you have to have like good descriptions. You can't just say, I will do 10. That's one thing that we actually stop to is uh, the mm -hmm. I will. I, we don't allow services to start with I will or I can okay. I hate that shit. Um, but, uh, right, right. Right, but basically you have to write like actual convincing copy and things like that because we want it to look like professionals and not just somebody who's trying to make a little side hustle mm, got it okay and then do you i mean seo industry you know anybody can be a ceo and we have so many the the, the common businessman out there the average businessman out there the local business owner 
they've been hurt by all these so-called marketers, the CEOs. So is, do you have like a betting process? Like I became a vendor in legit. I provide my services. I'm assuming if the reviews are bad, I'm all, all, probably going to be not get jobs and you're going to face me out, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, we already have, before anybody even has the opportunity to even see you, there's 66 things you have to get right. Hmm. On top of that, the, something that we're implementing as we speak, literally, uh, is you have to prove to us that you can help our customers. So just because you list a service, I'm not going to send you traffic. I'm not going to send you orders. You have to show me that and when I say me, I don't mean literally me, but right, right. Us, uh, that you have that your service is something that will benefit our customers and benefit businesses. Uh, and a lot of people don't want to do that. We get a lot of like beginners or low end stuff. Then, mm. And then they get mad at me because they're not getting any orders, but like your stuff doesn't serve our customers. So that's our goal is to have services that help customers. And like, you have to prove to us that you can do that, whether it's by going out and like getting sales on your own or, you know, I don't know, bringing people into the site or whatever, you know, you have to show that there's what you do is valuable to people on our platform. And yeah. And if you don't have good service and not just the deliverable, but like if you don't communicate properly, you know, All of that basic stuff, customer right. service. And you're not going to get sales. And I, like, that gets a lot of people mad at me, but I don't care. Like my goal right. isn't to get as many freelancers a sale as possible. It's to help as many businesses as possible. That's possible, right. Uh, and, you know, you, you mentioned like the average business owner. That's one of the problems we're trying to solve is because there's two problems that we that our customers have told us that they have. And the first is they bought something and it didn't get them any results. So they never buy any again. A lot of times I look at what they buy and I'm like, well, of course it didn't get you any results. You bought like the wrong thing for the wrong purpose. Mm. Uh, and it'd be easy to go. That just means that they're dumb, but like, that's still my problem to solve. That's still somebody that's never going to buy from me again because they didn't right. get the result that they want. So we're trying to what solve that, that yeah. by building in tools and software that can help guide them. But we're also, uh, and then the other problem we we run into is people said, there's so many things on there. I don't know what to buy. So I didn't buy anything. So that's mm. one of the reasons we're, removing a lot of the the services and narrowing it down just to the people that can most help businesses and help our customers. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So are you seeing most of the business uh, customers are business owners or are there most of them other marketers buying services? Do you know that? It's a, there's a balance of that. Like uh, we have like a lot of business owners, like uh, there's several niches in particular that seem to want to do their own SEO. I think in general, that's an underserved whatever, I don't know what word, and or sort of portion of the, the, I don't know, of the market is business owners that want to do it themselves. Mm. Um, that's something I found in both my SEO agency and as well as with legit. So there's a lot of people that want to do them th themselves rather than hire agencies or mm -hmm. experts. Right. I just, I, I just did air quotes again. Uh, that's a okay. little inside joke for my team that's watching. <laughs> okay. um, but, uh, but was I saying? Oh, but we also have a lot of agencies and independent, like one man gang agencies doing through us as well. Oh, that's so, rough. Okay. You know, people that can't afford to, like they have, you know, four or five clients, but they can't afford to have their own PBN, that type of thing. You know, it's funny uh, when COVID hit and everyone was trying to pivot and see what else they can do. Right. One of the things I looked into was starting a, something similar to Fiverr, like a marketplace, because I have a, a Facebook group and, you know, people try to sell stuff and all that. It was not easy, at least for me, to come up with something like this, right? And so I abandoned that idea as quickly as I came up with the idea, right? Um, I actually remember seeing you talk about that in your group. And you're like, yeah, yeah there's enough people doing this. I'll do something else. <laughs> uh, can you give me a, give us a, a, a glimpse into the, maybe a story, maybe a, your journey, maybe a, like how many, are you employing hundreds of people to run this or like just the, like, is, are you working 24 hours a day to head, to head cut off like a you know, chicken, like a head cut off or do you have managers and like a whole corporate structure? Like just to give a glimpse of what goes into running something like this. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, you, you said it's very challenging. You're absolutely right. I, I don't, first of all, it the, gets, the, 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 well, second of all, I guess it's a saturated industry. There's too many marketplaces as it is, but I also just don't recommend it to anybody to start their own. And I'm not saying that because like, I'm afraid of competition right, or anything right. like that. Yep. <laughs> it's like, there's challenges that you just don't get. First of all, the margin, like we make pretty good money. I'm not gonna lie, but the margins are razor thin. Mm -hmm. When you think we only make 15% of what anybody sells, you know, there's, a, we've had to add like other things to like right. increase the revenue. So that's one challenge yeah. as I see. And sometimes I get jealous of my friends that do like high ticket good coaching yeah. and like the profit. 95% margins, margins, right? Yep. Yeah. We get nowhere near <laughs> those right. kinds of margins. Yeah. The other problem is you were really running two businesses because you have to like, 
grow the freelancers at the same rate that you grow the customers. Because if you have too many customers, the freelancers get overwhelmed mm. and, or there's not people to fulfill what that particular customer wants or the freelancers get overwhelmed and they can't keep up and then the service de degrades. But if you have too many freelancers and not enough customers, then you got a lot of people with, it looks bad because you don't have any people getting sales. You got unhappy freelancers who don't bother to put in the effort. So it's kind of a chicken and the egg problem. You can't right. grow one without the other. You kind of have to grow them at the same yep. rate. And that is really hard. Uh, that's the challenge that we continue like continually have to work on. Um, but as far as like the corporate structure, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I just did a live stream on this, I guess last week. Uh, but, and I've done a talk on it before, but uh, in the beginning I was doing a lot of stuff, but as it's going, I've grown, I've gotten into more and more of a CEO role. And now we have a big team of probably, probably around 30 people. Uh, and that's developers, that's customer support, that's sales, marketing, outreach, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I have an executive assistant, th things of that nature. Now right. it's gotten to the point, I used to put in tons and tons of hours beyond what most people are even capable of, not to like pat myself on the back, but like, right, yeah. like to most people would have quit, you know what I mean? And I, I had to take a lot of risks and give up a lot of other things, but right. now I've gotten into much more of an executive role where I like, I make content and do things like that. And I make decisions and come up with like vision. And then everybody else like executed. We're, we have a really, really good team. We have like, I think 12 countries. I have somebody in every continent except for Antarctica. Uh, every time I say that, somebody's like, I'll move to Antarctica if you want to give me a job. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's wow. it, it's a it's an organization and a corporate corporation. And, right. a business now, and it's not just like a, it's not just like a little affiliate yeah. site or a side hustle. It's a, it's a mini Amazon, if you ask me, because it's, there's a lot of windows. It's not like you, you're selling one product and you're dealing with the customers. You got the customers and you got so many freelancers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of moving parts. I can see that. And it's funny you say that because it's not the goal anymore. But at one point, the, the vision I had was being the Amazon for digital services. So it's mm -hmm. funny you uh, bring it up that wow, way. Now okay. our, our goal is to, it's kind of modeled after Apple, where Apple was like the hub of all of your entertainment. You got your iPhone, your Mac, your Apple TV and all that right. stuff. Our goal is to have it to where a business can come in and they can use our, our software, our dashboard, plug in their business and they have everything they need there. And then they'll never go away because like, once you're like in that ecosystem, it's hard to get away. That's kind of yeah. like the goal and that's yeah. what we're moving towards. So do you have, um, is it only for sellers, freelancers? Or do you also have maybe sellers, maybe your, you, I don't know, but uh, selling websites like Flipper or Empire Flipper or did you even think about that route or you? I, I have. I, there's a lot of challenges with that too, because of the way the escrow works and things like that. Um, I mean, you, we've had a couple people list a site and just like sell it through us. I, okay. It's not something I've gotten into heavily because it doesn't really fit what our goal, which is to have other, like have businesses that are already existing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that becomes more of like, a, I don't know. I just, it's not something we have like a toy right. with it, but there's other people that are doing that well already. And yeah. you know what I mean? The Flippa yeah. and Empire Flippers and what's the other one? Right. Uh, Whatever it is. Flipper, Flipper, Empire yeah, Flippers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're, you are in such a unique position, Chris, because not only do you, like, not only do you have an agency and you know about a CEO, you're seeing so many other freelancers with so many other services, whatnot. What are you seeing right now in terms of where, where is yours going in terms of what people are buying more of, what people are, like, you know, are people buying PBNs or are people saying PBNs are bad? You know, like in terms of just normal, the average buyer out there, what are they coming and buying? What are you seeing more of? You know, what is hot maybe? But also, once you answer the question, I want to find out what are you, what are, what are, what opportunities are you seeing within your ecosystem that others can maybe, you know, I guess it's two big questions. So let's start with what are you seeing right now in terms of what's hard, what people are buying or, or something that, you know, a year ago, two years ago was not there, but Hey, a lot of people are like, like anything like that that jumps out at you. So first of all, this has been a bit of an, another challenge that I should mention is that divorcing my opinion on what works with SEO versus what other people do. Uh, Cause sometimes I see things that people buy and I'm like, what the fuck would anybody buy this for? Right. But it works for them. So I have to like take my opinion out of that. And I get criticized by some SEO people that like, cause you know how passionate, and that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, some people get about what they think doesn't work and what they think does yeah. work. Uh, I I get criticized for that sometimes, but like to me, it's, it's like, like politics. It's like politics, right? Trump much. or Kamala, people get animated. I know. Yeah. 
Go yeah, ahead. so I've, I've, I've tried to remove my personal opinion on what works because right. if I didn't do that, it wouldn't be like services. It would just be Chris's idea of what is a good service. Uh, but like, and then, you know, if just to, I'll, I'll get onto your question, but just to hammer that point home, like sure. some people would tell you that link, you shouldn't be selling links. And that's like our biggest category is links. Right. So, you know, the, the white hat purity ponies would tell you that. So mm -hmm. I have to draw, where do I draw that line? And the way I do that is to let capitalism decide what mm -hmm. what people want and what right. they don't as far as what's working um it's kind of hard to say because like i see so many one of the advantages and if you want to call it that is i see so many different strategies from so many different people doing so many different things that i i guess the thing is there's not one thing that works in seo mm -hmm. you know what i mean like overall links are still our biggest category guest posts niche edits pbns uh all those things but wow, really? yeah but uh you know, I see people using all kinds of crazy strategies and just to like do a little plug of our stuff here. One of the things we're doing is taking the seven years of data that we've gotten from people buying things and people having success. And we built that into like our, the AI that's becoming part of our, our platform and the, the dashboard on our platform to help people plug in their site and say, well, other people that have had sites like yours have done this and gotten success. So you can buy this. So wow. we're using that to our advantage, right? That's a good one. There's nobody else doing anything like that. And no one else can because no one else has that kind of data to like yeah. from that diverse. Like, you know, in Amazon.com, I buy a book and it says people who bought this book also bought this, this and this, something like that. Yeah, it's similar to that. And like, you will you can literally go and put in like your website and it'll come up with recommendations on what you should wow. do. And then the more stuff you connect and the more data you give us, the better it will get. And that kind of helps solve that problem of uh, there's so much stuff I don't know what to buy. So we're trying to help solve that for people. Mm -hmm. And we have, an, we have a chat bot that's built in too, that's just being rolled out. Not everybody has it yet, where you can be like, I have a roofing company in St. Louis, Missouri, and I want to get more calls. What should I buy? And it will like spit out what you should buy. Wow. That is amazing. That, I think you are ahead of the curve. That's awesome. Well, I try to be. <laughs> yeah, no, it's awesome. So do you see anything in terms of where's, where's the opportunity now? Where is the hole that needs to be filled? And again, not necessarily in terms of services, but as you're building your behemoth business, right? Maybe you're seeing, and I'm just throwing this out, maybe you're seeing buyers need to be educated. Maybe you're seeing sellers need to be educated. Maybe communication, like, is there anything you're like, man, I, I, there's, a, there's a huge hole here that kind of needs to be plugged. There's an opportunity, so anything like that. Are, are you seeing, maybe you see nothing. I'm just asking. Um, Again, I think it's the um, individual business owner that wants to do their own SEO or marketing or ads or whatever it is, but just doesn't quite know how. Uh, like they, they, or they don't know who to trust or what to buy. They don't want to hire an agency for whatever reason. Maybe they don't want to spend it. Maybe they've gotten burned. I know if you do clients, you've always heard that. Like I've spun, worked with so many agencies and I got burned. Like everybody tells you that. Yeah. And, you know, it's true. Uh, but that's the, that's the thing is I, I there's, it's a much bit more untapped niche than people realize is business owners wanting to do their own SEO. And I think that I'm in a unique position to help solve that. But I think even if I wasn't, like if I had an agency, I would focus on finding a way to package my offer, my service to people like that. Mm. So it felt like they were still doing it themselves. So I would maybe offer rather than a monthly retainer type of thing, I would offer like a la carte type of services and just give them guidance on what to use. And I that's think that that's un, a really untapped thing. Uh, I've met some really successful business owners that are doing it themselves. Uh, that I've is a good that. point because I can, as you're talking, I'm thinking about this nail salon client I have. I've had this for seven, maybe eight, well, more than seven years now. But literally even the, the other week, she's she knows stuff. She's learning about SEO all the time. She's one of those hands-on, mm -hmm. I'm learning stuff. For, and she's like that. And and. And she was like, hey, and we use PBNs, you know, and there's a whole yeah. discussion around PBNs, whatever, right? But we do it the right way, if you ask me, right? And she's now learned PBNs from my teachings, right? And she's like, I want to try it out. I've said, okay, I mean, it's almost like this. You go to the airport, right? The other day, I, I last three, four months ago, I flew, flew right? The, the lady standing next to the kiosk is basically saying you you put your name and credit card number and you take you you have the you you get the the uh, the boarding pass she's literally telling me that this kiosk is taking her job away <laughs> right yeah. right that's how it is and, and i think we 
as marketers, as if you want to be aligned with where the future is going, I cannot say SEO, 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 I'm is monthly returners. Maybe mm. that's not how it's going to go with AI and with Google and everything, you know, it's going. I was just going to say that AI is going to advance that too, because like it makes it even easier to do a lot of the stuff that not just SEO, but like businesses have been charging people to do for a long time. And people are going to start doing that themselves when, you know, why hire an agency to when you can just type something into chat GBT and turn it into a make.com so automation, it'll yeah. do that for you. Like I know someone and I won't mention his name, but who basically replaced his executive assistant with an AI. And wow. he said it hasn't like effect impacted business at all. It, <laughs> is, just... it is the, the rate of acceleration of all this AI tools is crazy. Yeah. Like... I signed up for one. Yeah. I think it was yesterday. I forget the name of it now. It's like, but anyway, like you could put up a video of yourself into it. And then you can, it'll like build you. And then you I can... know that uh, there's one called Creatify and there's one uh, Hy Hygen. 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 That was the one I used. And I, I it's funny. I, I made one. I was just playing around with it yesterday. I made a video of my, of me. Uh, and that was why I said the joke about air quotes earlier. Cause like the, the AI of me used air quotes and people say, I don't do that, but I've done it several times since. But anyway, I put that into our Slack channel. I was like, team, I have a very important announcement coming for you later today. So pay attention. And that was an AI of me. It wasn't me. And then wow. the very important announcement was that that wasn't really me <laughs> that said that. You know and, where this is, where this is going, Chris, you can literally have content written by chat GPT, you know, a video done by this AI clone of yours mm -hmm. and all published it. And you can be in a beach in Hawaii, right? Where you're doing just 10% of the work and 90% and, and it's ongoing. And you, you can be, you can literally build your brand and that's where the world is going. And now thanks to Elon Musk and his robots. I mean, the way, I, like I said, the rate of acceleration of this new AI tool, it is, it is mind boggling. It, it can be scary if you're not prepared and it, it can be scary, you know? Uh, yeah, people are commenting like crazy. They're like, well, how do you spell that? It's it's H Y G E N, I believe, right? Uh H E Y G E N. H E Y G E N Hygen. Yeah, I, I actually made a note to myself to look into that more. I haven't actually get to that. Wow, love it. Where where are your comments? Is that on YouTube? What uh where yeah, in my YouTube channel. Um oh, yeah. the link I, that I gave you, yeah, it's streamed gotcha. streamed there. Right okay. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll um once it's done, I'll give you the video. So if you want to publish it in your group, sure. you know, feel free to, because I love talking business like this. Is there anything that marketing wise, business wise, getting clients wise, or just building a business wise, any, any insights that you, because I, I truly think you are in the forefront of like cutting edge of things that are happening because there's so many people that you are dealing with every day, any insights, breakthroughs, something that you came across like, Oh my God, you know, like, like hygiene, but maybe for business and marketing that you, you that are sticking out in your mind right now that um, anything at all? Not, not a specific tactic, but I think what you need to do is if you're trying to like grow your business via some tactic or marketing or something, mm -hmm. try a bunch of different things and then figure out what works and then do more of that. Uh, I know that sounds like overly simplistic, but I'm stunned at how many people will find something yeah. that works and then just stop doing it. And I'm talking a little bit to myself here Me too. Uh, gotta... because, um, uh, or during the pandemic, uh, like early part of the pandemic, one thing I did that really like sky the pandemic was really good for our business. Is mm -hmm. I, I feel horrible saying that, right, because, right. No, it's fine. Yeah. but like it would really like massive growth during that time. And one of the things I did, and it was mostly just because I was lonely and bored, but I started doing daily live streams, just talking to people, kind of like we're doing right now, but sometimes on my own too. Yeah. And it really helped grow our community and our our business and stuff. And I did those every day for three or four months. And then I stopped. I don't know if it's because I got busy or I got tired of them or I got, you know, whatever, but I stopped. And I was, when I was cleaning up my YouTube channel, maybe a month ago, I've seen all the live streams from 2020. And I was like, man, that really was key for our growth. Why the fuck am I not still doing that? Right. So I've gotten back to doing that and been doing four or five of them a week. That is, like, huh. You hit it on the head, Chris. I've seen that in the pandemic. I'm seeing that now for the longest time I have a, so I have an SEO coaching program. Mm -hmm. I've been doing, you can get into that program for $9.97, sometimes $14.97, sometimes $9.97, depending, right? I have not missed a week. Every Thursday, we have coaching calls on that. We have not missed a week. Maybe one or two, I may have missed it, truly, like the most consistent ever. I had people who joined in 2019 still coming and learning about, hey, what's the latest that's working with GMBs and maps? Because I'm a technical geek, if you will, so you know, reverse engineer, stuff like that. 
I teach. And I was just thinking out loud, like, yeah, I'd love to teach. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy, you know, you're learning and all that. But it's just not like if I'm going to be teaching every day for the rest of my life, uh, you paid $9.97 one time for so many years ago, right? right? So I've literally moved this to a school membership now, a school classroom is called, right? Um, and I just started at a low price point of 47 a month for the first 10 people. Um, that went away in a couple of hours. And now I'm doing 67 a month, stuff like that. Uh, yep, Chris is like that. Yep, thank you. You got it there. Um, and so where I'm seeing is like the stuff, if you see the marketing landscape, Alex Homozi and, and Sam Owens collaborating on school, recurring. 2014, when I got started, 2013, when you got started, the number of people doing SEO, the number of people um, doing anything with online marketing was so less. The competition was not there. Now everybody and their mother-in-law is a course creator, is an influencer, is a guru, is a life coach. You know how it is, right? I cannot, at least I, I don't have a, a marketplace like legit like i have a coaching program i cannot still maybe i can do high ticket i don't know but for somebody in india or pakistan or bangladesh for them to pay 67 a month and learn and make money it's not going to be helpful for them also mm -hmm. but also for somebody like me who's a, a coach if you will if i'm going to be learning and dissecting new stuff and figuring it out and teaching it it only makes sense i get something every month also because i'm going to be pouring my heart out every month because literally I've seen people in 2019, 2020, right? They still come to my uh, weekly coaching calls, ask questions. We, in my coaching calls, sometimes, I don't know if you know this, Chris, we cold call businesses live and land clients. Awesome. No, I didn't that know that. That is crazy stuff. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, more on the rank and rent side or, or even okay. client. But when I say land, we get them interested in there's a nurturing two, three step process, right? But we've done that live. And so I guess where I'm going with this is the way the digital marketing landscape is going on, is moving. We have to be looking into where it's going, the future is. I cannot say I'm going to be an SEO depending on Google for the rest of my life because Google may not be there the way it's going now mm -hmm. with AI and chat GPT and all of that stuff. Well, also their their algorithm is the worst it's ever been. Like, absolutely. The, the absolute worst it's ever been, yes. Um, yeah, I don't rely heavily on like Google like, SEO drives a lot of traffic to legit, but it's probably it's definitely not my number one channel. Like personal branding, I hate that expression, but personal branding has been the most effective marketing channel for me. And, like, mm -hmm. there's a downside to that because like if I ever decide to like sell, which isn't the plan, but if I ever did, right. you know, then it makes it harder. But yeah, I got YouTube and Facebook and you know whatever channel, Twitter. You, I see your Twitter sometimes. Actually, you're very good. Really? At that. I, I, yeah. I, I literally, you know what? <laughs> I haven't posted my Twitter ever. I have a VA who just oh, takes my content and and my my account there has been at 500 and something forever. I should probably put, I've noticed, so I have a YouTube channel now. It's a good conversation we're having. I love this. Thank you, by the way. I have this YouTube channel for four years. I was, I never put anything intentionally. Mm. Okay. I had weekly coaching calls and my VA would occasionally snip something and post recently I started putting out posts, right? And I went and said, what, what's Neil Patel's most viewed video and something along the lines of how to make money online passive income. So I put that and that became my most, you know, mm -hmm. most viewed. So only now I'm doing these live streams. That's my subscriber count has gone up about 300 or 500 in the last two, three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, literally was stuck in thousand something forever, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that brings me to the other one. Other question is I'm in my early forties. So am I. Well, mid forties actually. But... Okay, I'm in the mid forties. I just want to. I just didn't know what to sound. <laughs> you know how it is. I'm forty six. I don't know how old you are. I'm forty five. Right, right? There you go. I don't know about you. Tell me. I have a nephew. Every single day he's on TikTok, mm -hmm. and I see his count going up every single day. Right. I'm not very excited about this video, this planning. You know, I, I'd rather do these live things or coaching and snip it and put it like. What are you doing for personal branding? Is I doing anything at all or? Oh yeah. Uh, so the big ones for me have been YouTube. I like to do, I don't like to do short form either, like reels and TikToks right. and all that shit. I just, uh, I don't, it doesn't work for me. Like I, I have a hard time making a point in 15 seconds. Yeah. Yep. Uh, not to say that it doesn't work because it does. It's just, it's not mm -hmm. for me. But right. long form YouTube, both live streams and pre-recorded videos have been huge for me. Uh, and then Facebook has been really, really good to me. And I think it has been for you too, but yeah. I, my personal Facebook is a complete marketing channel, even when it looked like it's not, 
Like a lot of times I'll just share something cool that I'm doing, whether it's like boxing or whether it's, you know, mm. whatever is on my mind, what I'm watching, what movie I'm watching. What I'm trying to do there is get people to like me and then follow me. And then like when I have something for them to buy, they're more likely to see me. And that, that has worked really, really well. Uh, you know, I, I don't, that kind of comes off as sounding a little insincere. Like, no, no, I totally get that. You're, you're being genuine. You're being, yeah. Personal stuff, but yeah, you know, it's not, but even when it's personal, it's still kind of like getting people to like me type of thing. Right. I've been really good at Facebook. I, I, I've had some really like good Facebook posts, but YouTube is probably the, the, uh, the one I would tell everybody to do. Totally. In fact, I do tell everybody to do, because I do a little bit of like coaching and consulting too. And when they're the first question I always get is how do I get more business? Get your ass on YouTube. Even if it's just like basic, you know, here's how you set up Yoast SEO or right. I don't know, whatever. I can't think of a good example, but mm -hmm. just do YouTube, do it, do it. I have videos I posted in 2017 that still bring me sales today. Wow. You know what I mean? And it's just, it, there's no better personal branding channel for it. Uh, Alex Ramosi, you mentioned him. He yep. did a video recently on the different channels and how yes, they Yes, I watched that. Yes. Yeah. And YouTube was his number YouTube one. was the highlight. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good point. I had a... I had a young couple. Um, they got married recently, but they were boyfriend and girlfriend when they they watched my they found my YouTube video a couple of years ago on rank and rent. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do asset based passive income and so join my coaching program, my course nine ninety seven. And then I find out they have one point some million followers on TikTok, mm -hmm. some crazy number on Instagram, and I'm like, what are you doing? Learning rank and rent, talking to the plumber and the local business owner, right? Yeah. And this is what they told me. Young kids, two young kids, Sam and Monica. You can look them up. Um, each of them have a million followers on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know YouTube, but in TikTok and Instagram mostly. They were like, as as much as fun it is, right? It takes a lot of work to come up with these ideas and then shoot these videos and then you know how it is. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> true. I'm recording you for our Instagram. <laughs> nice. Right, but yeah, I should probably you're do that too. Right, like that's that's a, the hardest part, honestly. That yeah, is so but, true. Is yep. coming up with ideas. I struggle with that daily. Like I try what I, and, and if you're at just a little tip on that is to mm -hmm. pay attention to your own life and figure out ways you can turn that into content. For, for example, I do like boxing and kickboxing in the evenings and I always wear my own merch because it, why not? Right. Okay. <laughs> right. And like last night, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to do a live stream on this later today, but so mm -hmm preview for anybody there, but uh -huh. uh, somebody said to me, you know, I, I, I know you've been coming here for a while and I didn't really know that legit was your company. I just thought like you worked there or something, but I got bored one night and I like looked it up and I found you on, uh, uh, you know, I found your, your, your Google knowledge panel. He didn't call it that. Cause he doesn't know the term. Right, right. Google knowledge panel and all this information on you. And, uh, and, and then he's like, so I went and checked out your site. So I, and we, basically I think he's going to, I'm going to turn him into a customer all because I happen to wear this t-shirt because it's my brand. And then he looked up my personal brand because I had taken the time to have all right. this stuff out there about me and about my business. And, you know, and, I, and now, so now not only do I get a customer out of that, I'm going to turn that into some content to tell people that, that they should be doing that too. So, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully that's a great point you brought because the way it's going now, every business, whether you are, it's a one man business, whether it's a traditional business, whether it's you know, legit or anything, you have to become like a personal brand, a personal media kind of a thing. You have to be a media business. Yeah. And I actually made a post from the, the other day. You have to become a media business. And people love raw authenticity now more than anything else. That's what I feel. If you're just raw, then you you, you have all these edited videos and all that. The raw videos, I see they are, they're, they're going, you know, much further. Yeah, you still need to have like a good hook and all that stuff yeah. to really get attention. But yeah. Uh... <laughs> Somebody just said in the, the comments, Chris is always the first link sponsored on Facebook for me when I scroll. Yeah, uh, Josh, accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, like you, I mean, you still have to like have a good hook. But yeah, I, I find that it's something I see that a lot of people get wrong. And I got it wrong in the past as well is having overly produced stuff. You still have to have good editing, but like overly edited and yeah. stuff like that. It doesn't resonate as well, especially with the short form stuff. Uh, again, yeah. I, I'm no expert on short. Form, I did but... try a short form, uh, me just walking and there was an AI voice, right? And I got some cringy comments. So <laughs> I never really get any views. Like I've never been able to crack yeah. the code for like TikTok yeah. or I get Facebook reels. I do pretty well with, but that's about it. There's a guy in my um, SEO course, um, Ronnie. He's built a $40,000 a month SEO agency. Ronnie Rodriguez. Ronnie Rodriguez. Yes. Yeah, I know Ronnie. Yeah, um, based mostly 90% of his customers come from his Instagram channel. I believe right? it. Yeah. Um, and he came into a mastermind and he did a crash course on how he does it. And he was like, 
all his all his videos in all his videos in Instagram are basically him just having the video and he's pointing three things that work on SEO or two yeah. things on on page optimization. And I and I literally was laughing and I told him I can do that. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't have to dance and sing in the rain. I, I can literally point right. But I was like, <laughs> I'm 45. I don't really feel comfortable. I feel awkward doing that. But he was like, you can make money, right? Um, it's a good point. I I feel like I feel you on that because like uh, sometimes when I talk about doing content, I'm like, I'm 46. I think, do I really want to be doing this like the exactly. dancing monkey when I'm 50? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah. some I think about that a lot. Love it. And then Josh tomorrow I have Alaric Heck. I, do you know, know Alaric Heck? Uh, Josh says must be good because I'm a paying client. Well, thank you for that, Josh. <laughs> uh, do you do you know Alaric Heck from YouTube? YouTube yeah. ads. YouTube? I mean, I don't know him, but I know who you're talking about. I'm interviewing him tomorrow, um, and I'm oh, going to pick right. his brain on YouTube and YouTube ads and all that. Absolutely. He's really a boss at paid ads too, because yes. like, uh, like he like uh, Josh said, he sees me whenever I he scrolls. I see his ads. I see him. Yep. yep. <laughs> Everywhere. He's something else. That guy. I actually bought his. I bought his YouTube, his highest package, whatever he had three years ago. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'm ashamed to tell you, Chris, I did not touch it. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I watched some videos, but I did not. I, I'm guilty. I have to get into that video thing. Yeah. yeah. I've got a lot of courses where I've done that and just never watched it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, awesome. Love it. I mean, I would love to keep continuing. I I, I know, you know you're, I value your time. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I'm doing this, um, like I told you before, is this I'm raising money for uh, orphanage in Sri Lanka. Um, so we can package all of this and people can donate it. And then for a, a slightly higher price point, people that if people donate, they would get something for free. Right. Um, and I, I ask everybody and I know I, I did not inform you ahead of time. So I apologize on that, but I will come up with something. I, I don't have anything, but I will. Yeah. If something. anything at all, um, that is probably valuable to people. So instead of me just going and saying, everybody give me money for my cause, because I know everyone's got their own cause and whatever they feel. Well, first of all, um, before you continue, I just want to say it is a great cause. I know several of our freelancers from Sri Lanka, and I know what they've gone through over the last couple of years. Uh, and it's, it's thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah, and I was cool. born there. For those of you who don't know, and then at age of four, I moved out because my family couldn't live there. And so then I was I grew up in India. My dad was working in Saudi, um, Saudi Arabia, and then uh, I moved to US in 2002. But I I know a lot of people, even personally, who are impacted by. You know uh, whatever happened there mm -hmm. the main thing now is even though the war has been over for 15 years now there's a lot of ch children in orphanages child labor is like 30 percent 29 30 percent malnourishment you know like corruption i mean like every yeah. asian country is yeah, i mean every country these days is corrupted but yeah. uh, so I mean, they had to overthrow the government like last year or whatever right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there was uh all kinds of stuff going on you know how it is right as a matter of fact um i'm going there next month to sri lanka so one of the things is raise some money and then go to the orphanage and give it. Um, good, good for you. Yeah, I, I, I've with done you. work with them in the past, so I know how it is. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll come up with something because that's. A, I a appreciate topic. that. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah and my well, plan is maybe as well because I know quite a few folks there. Uh, I, 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 I totally I, appreciate that. We didn't that. talk about this, but one thing that I I love about what I do is I get to know people all over the world, and I've met some amazing people that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet. That is a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. I love it. Love it. Awesome. No, thank you again, Chris. Um, again, you know my Facebook group. Are you in my SEO Accelerator Facebook group? I believe so, yeah. Um, feel free to post anything. You know, I, I truly think you, um, I mean, I know of you. I've always known of you and legit, but just talking to you, I can see you're just a down-to-earth person, right? Mm -hmm. um, somebody commented, you, you're a bodybuilder, but you have a, <laughs> a soft heart, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but I truly appreciate that. Uh, I, I truly thank you for your time, Chris. All right. I appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, everybody. Thanks, thanks again for joining. Take care. Bye-bye.